How I think I sound groaning. Ow. <laughs> what my man hears. Have you ever been scrolling through your social media of choice? Then boom. You are confronted with the irrevocably human depravity of the species you were regretfully born into. Some 23-year-old white woman with long, wavy blonde hair regaling you with the most vile details of her life. Only for you to look on in horror. Is this real? Would I have done the same in her shoes? Have I done similar? Have I merely never uttered the words aloud? Is anything sacred anymore? All thoughts swarming your mind as you face this formidable foe. Cringe. I'm Sabal Black Sheep. Have you any soul? No sir, no sir. But I'd happily force y'all to suffer with me as we delve into the mystery of why Gen Z loves to treat their audience like their own personal therapists. Confiding the most delinquent of tales to judging eyes and ears. It's no surprise that the internet has provided a unique sense of privacy for many. Things most would not tell anyone in their real lives are being leaked through stories and posts to be viewed by relatively like-minded strangers. It's good to have a place to share things about your life where people can understand them. The internet merely provides a vehicle to reach communities and people you would have never have met otherwise. An individual sharing a traumatic event in their lives where many people in their real lives had judged and shamed them for can be posted and people can empathize and understand with what they're going through outside of their immediate community. Turned to a woman telling you about the time she became an anti-vaxxer and a Facebook group convinced her to feed her children her own piss. Now class, I want you to tell me the difference between those two examples. One is valid and understandable. The other is unfathomably repugnant. And someone should call CPS. Before I start showing you the heavily questionable stories from our resident morons, I'd like you to always ask yourself this question when you're viewing content. Is this person actually insane or am I being baited? As a wee little content creator, I feel the ever-beckoning allure of screaming the N-word on a kick livestream to grift harder and faster than Andrew Tate's receding hairline. But alas, I have a sense of morality. To not spit in the face of individuals whose problems have long since been the butt of too many a joke. But from that dark desire, I understand where a lot of content is made. The best thing to do when you encounter bait, depending on what breed it is, A. Laugh and scroll. B. Cringe and scroll. C. Leak their IP in the comments. <laughs> For legal reasons. That's a joke. Enough yapping, let's get to the juicy stuff. When my clients doesn't have a dark booty hole. Me, being dark down there. Uses my lightning exfoliant scrub to help with ingrown hairs and lighten my skin. Honestly, I am unsure how to even address this information. Look, I'm no Puritan. If your dumpster chute is darker than a black hole, um, that's wonderful. Don't tell me about it, please. I don't want that image in my head, but great for you. On one hand, I know some people can be insecure about the color of their outgoing delivery box, and this light-hearted video might help them realize it's normal and help them feel not so alone in that, I guess. On the other hand, now millions of people know what this woman's booty hole looks like. Not to mention, regularly making content about the delicate parts of your clients is a bit strange, in my opinion. It might help some feel less embarrassed, but personally, if I got your services, then ran into a video of you talking about how my nether regions looked like, I'd be having a dance party in my brain, and the only person invited is the biting still of a fucking bullet. Another form of content I regularly see from these wax tiktokers is showing the whole wax strip from someone's Brazilian wax. I have no words. What the fuck? My client's Brazilian wax strips. She grew out her hair for several weeks prior. Since 
censoring it because A, U, B, YouTube. Why? Show this. What does this do beyond invade someone's privacy? You see every detail through the wax strip. How many of these people are actually getting their client's permission to post this? And even if they are, there are so many children on TikTok. Do you really need to be showing a bunch of kids what this grown ass woman's thing looks like? There are so many videos like this showing off wax strips. Maybe I'm being judgmental. I don't get it. But honestly, from an outsider's view, this is disgusting. Imagine having this woman rip out your nether bush, then peer up between your legs and say, heh, wow. That's a lot. Can I post this on TikTok? I'm actually tweaking. What is wrong with you people? Look, if you like getting waxed, no judgment. I'm done with this conversation. My wife decided we should open our marriage. I said no way am I watching you date someone else. She said I think you are missing the plot. I want to watch you. First and foremost, I have no problem with poly couples at all. Do I get it? No. But I also don't get why people want to fuck each other in general, so... Whatever, have fun, be safe, communicate. Here's what I don't like, is glamorizing pushing your partner's boundaries. The husband said he didn't like the idea of an open relationship. What in the ever-loving gods changes by saying, No, I want you to date, not me. Oh, that's so healthy. A one-sided open relationship? Oh, that's worked before. That's totally balanced. And this won't end horribly. Look, I hope it works out for them, but it's normalizing asking such a question to your partner in such a nonchalant way is cringy. Because I'm gonna be frank, most people I know that have partners, if their partner asked this question to them, that would be sickening to them. Understandably, most aren't poly, and that's okay. If you are, just don't go into a relationship without telling your partner. And if you figure it out while you're in that relationship, well, that is going to be one weird fucking conversation to have. So, good luck, soldier. I wish you the best. But I feel like this video doesn't even show what the polyamorous community is really about. This seems more swingerish, but whatever. I don't know shit. What I do know is showing every detail of your relationship isn't needed. <laughs> I'm not just talking about this couple. When you in game, either if you try to be Gail's friend, he will lash out the same way that my ex did to me. And same with if you romance him and then reject him because it, you don't, because Gail, both friendship Gail as well as romance Gail triggered my PTSD because of the way he talks. He again he talks like a narcissistic abuser and I it was quite the watch 10 minutes long this one made me laugh. If you don't know what this individual is talking about, they're talking about Gale of Waterdeep, a character from the game Baldur's Gate 3. An amazing game and an amazing character. Me and most everyone who plays the game with an ounce of media literacy would know Gale is not a narcissistic abuser. He is well written to show the nuances and feelings and actions one might feel or do after being sexually groomed since he was eight. He was written to be a tad clingy, kind of emotional, and has a desire for power and knowledge, but never really hurts anyone in that process, and if he does, sure as hell he feels way too much guilt for it. Where the oversharing aspect of this person's 10 minute rant about a fictional character came from? This video was made to reply to someone saying they loved the character Gale, so they made a 10 minute trauma dumping rant to the stranger to show them why Gale is icky and bad. Look, not enjoying his character, that's fine. I think Astarian is annoying as hell. Not enjoying his character, that's fine. I fucking hate Astarian. The trauma this person went through as to why they don't like the character Gale is valid, and it's horrible that they had to go through that. What's weird is you trauma dumping on a stranger about you getting groomed and abused. For all you know, that can be an extremely triggering subject to this person, but you did it anyway. For what? To prove a point that was never about you to begin with? Look, I understand this response. If they were harassing you or telling you off for not liking the fictional character Gale, then I can see why you'd feel pressured to make this, given maybe not to this extent. <laughs> 
but this person just didn't agree with you and you just puked emotional vomit all over them. I actually have a friend that can't stand the character Halson for similar reasons. I love Halson. He's a great character. My friend has a bad association with the character, so they don't keep him in their party, but understands why I like the only pseudo dilf in the game. God. They should have made more. I want Black Ball back. And <laughs> let's me discuss about the character Judgment Free because we respect each other's opinions. It's honestly <laughs> isn't that hard. I am begging for you to try it. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Discord server. And if you enjoy my art, check out my Etsy with adult coloring sheets, shirt designs, and wall art, all linked in description. Back to the video. The cherry on top of the cake of cringe, crying on camera for attention. Honestly, I don't understand why people constantly post themselves crying on camera to show to millions of strangers. Personally, it has always made me cringe. I will sooner bite a finger-sized hole through my cheek than cry in front of someone or post that nonetheless. This next video is going to take the crying on camera cake. I am processing the most triggering breakup I've had in nine years. I am process, I am processing the most triggering. I don't even have words, what, why? Like, I get she's going through something very hard and I don't wanna kick her while she's down, but she can't be surprised. That was the general response to her video. Look, I've never been in a relationship. I don't really do that stuff. So correct me if I'm being insensitive, but setting up a camera so you can have a tantrum and post it to TikTok because you're upset over a dude leaving you is pathetic. It's good to sit with your feelings and process them, but broadcasting that to millions online, you don't need to. I feel like the normalization of showing yourself having a breakdown on camera online sets a really weird precedence for the expectations on others. On one hand, it can help people realize they're not alone in their grief. On the other, I think sharing and creating this content in excess breeds a culture where trauma dumping is okay. And that it's on the person that is being trauma dumped on to respond correctly. I'm gonna be frank, in my 20 years of life, most people are asinine with dealing with their own issues and even worse when it comes to dealing with others. I'm not saying don't share your burdens. We are a part of a social species. We need each other. Having a friend to talk to and help you through things can make a big difference, but it's the overexposure to that that's too far. Not every detail of your sadness needs to be shared. And though friends can help, it's ultimately up to you to learn, grow, and change. I know it can feel good to be seen and heard when you're experiencing these moments. It can be hard for some to sit with that feeling of isolation. But the process of crying is helping. It has a use. You don't need validation from randos online for your crying to have a purpose. Anyways, that's all I have for today, folks. You have work tomorrow, or school, or judging people online. But as always, don't dream about wheat-based byproducts. And another thing, all eyes on Rafa. Israel has been beheading children. What the hell? Mm -hmm.